astrological predictions for everybody for the new year 2023. Hello everybody, I'm Tina Chaudhry. Welcome to my channel and a very warm namaste. Aham Brahmasmi so the year 2022 is almost over and the new year is going to begin in a few days and all of us including myself we start getting very excited because we think you know we associate the new year with new beginnings and maybe the energy shifts and we're gonna uh, get something positive in our lives something that we didn't get this year we think oh maybe the next year is going to bring it for us so um you know we look forward to the new year with so much excitement all of us do i, I know i do i look forward to the new year always with so much excitement you know because the vibration of the new year always has uh, a new vibration it brings a new energy into our lives I've already made one video uh, based on the numerological uh, vibration for 2023 uh, making some predictions based on the date of birth it's a numerology prediction based on and on your date of birth and anybody can watch it and figure out what the energy of 2023 carries for them so I'll add a link to my description box if you haven't watched it you need to watch it it's an amazing video the last year when I did it I got like over a quarter of a million views on it now this year I don't know why th I didn't get that many views because but I found out when I talking to a lot of people that YouTube didn't send out the notifications for the subscribers so if you haven't watched it please do watch it it's actually amazingly accurate and it actually gives you a very good idea of what kind of energy 2023 brings for you based on your date of birth so I'll add a link to my description box for that video and then I'll also add it to my end page I always do add my end pages some of the nice videos that you sh you know still be watching so um, I'll make astrological predictions in this video because a lot of people asked for them and said I still want to watch the Vedic astrology predictions based on the ascendant so this is the video that I'm making today is based on the astrological predictions now I really encourage everybody to watch both videos because the numerological predictions are based on the energy of the numbers which is extremely accurate like I said and it's actually a uh, very eye-opening and you'll you can you can actually reflect back on previous years and see how that worked for you they've always worked very well for me that's why I like to put that video out you can watch this video obviously for the actual events that may happen in this um, in this year based on the planetary positions so watch both videos put them together and kind of come uh, come uh, up with your own predictions for your year based on the energy of you know both the predictions so both predictions are very important so I'm strongly encouraging you to watch that video as well so let's take a look at the planetary placements of 2023 and why it's so important and significant well every year is significant but 2023 has some special significance to it what is that well all the uh, slow moving planets which is Saturn and Jupiter and the nodes which is Rahu Ketu are going to have transits in 2023 Saturn is the slowest moving planet it stays in the same zodiac for two and a half years that's going to have a transit uh, Jupiter is um, has a transit every 13 months 12 to 13 months and that's going to have a transit and Jupiter always has a transit almost every year the nodes which is Rahu Ketu have a transit once in 18 months so it's um, sometimes some there are some years where Rahu and Ketu don't have a transit but in 2023 they're going to have a transit too so let's just kind of go through the dates of these transits well the first transit that's going to happen is going to be Saturn and that's going to be on January 17th so the beginning of the year we begin with Saturn having a transit it's going to move from its house where it's been sitting for the longest time it seems like it's been the longest time from the house of Capricorn and it's going to move to the next house of um, Aquarius now Saturn loves being in Aquarius it's also it's Multricone Rashi Multricone Rashi is where the planet is it's the favored Rashi of the planet the placement of Saturn in Aquarius is far better for all of us than it is in uh, Capricorn so the next transit is going to be of Jupiter and that's going to be on April 22nd where Jupiter is going to move from it's been very comfortable in Pisces it's enjoying its stay in Pisces Pisces is the house of sleep so Jupiter is just enjoying its very relaxed comfortable stay in Pisces ruled by itself and it's going to move into the next house of Aries on April 22nd and April uh, Aries is ruled by Mars so Jupiter and Mars get along well there it's not an enemy sign so they're, they're they get along well so it's an okay transit 
of Jupiter. I'll tell you why it's going to be a little worrisome. But the third transit is going to be on October 30th. So the nodes move backwards because they're shadow planets. They're not actual planets. They're shadows. They're shadows of the moon. So the Rahu is the north shadow of the moon and Ketu is the sha south shadow of the moon so a shadow always moves behind you so the uh, that's the best way i can explain it the quick way of explaining it so the shadows uh, rahu ketu planets don't move in a forward motion they always move in a retrograde motion so right now rahu and ketu are in aries and libra and so then rahu will move backwards into the sign of pisces and um Ketu will move from uh, Libra, it'll move back to Virgo. So these are the four major transits that are going to happen in uh, 2023. Of course, the fast moving planets like Venus, uh, Mars, Mercury, and the Sun will always be having transits. The Sun always has a transit in the middle of the month, so it goes through the zodiac in one full year. One of the other important transits, like I said, is Mars. So right now, Mars has been retrograde, and surprisingly, Mars has been very slow moving. Mars Mars is a fast moving planet but somehow it's just moved very slow and uh, it's it's in the sign zodiac sign of Taurus and it's retrograde now one of the very good things for all of us is going to be that it's going to start its direct motion in Taurus on January 12th and finally it's going to move into its next uh, zodiac sign Will you believe it? It's still going to take two months to go from when it starts its direct motion from Taurus. It's going to go into Gemini on March 12th. When this transit happens in um, January, uh, I will make a video on that. Now, it's not really possible for me to uh, make predictions on every single transit during the whole year and give you predictions for the whole year. When I do my predictions on the next you know, panels for all the ascendants, my predictions are going to be based on the transits of the slow moving planets. So they're going to be based on the transits of Saturn, Jupiter and the nodes, which the nodes are going to be, you know, really transiting towards the end of the year. So. Uh, you know, I mean, they do transit at the end of the year, but we don't see the results of those transits till much later in the year. So, you know, Saturn and Jupiter are actually the most event giving uh, planets uh, for all of us. So the reason this is so significant, these transits are so significant is because Saturn is actually the giver of all the important events in our life, along with Jupiter, good events, as well as some of the challenging events. One of the things that I do want to mention that you know i haven't really heard anybody mention it but i do want to mention it is what happens is that when jupiter after april moves into the sign of aries rahu has already been in aries for a very long time and when rahu and jupiter come together it's called uh, in a vedic astrology it's called guru chandal yoga guru is jupiter and rahu is considered a chandal and chandal is not a good word in in hindi chandal means a demon so it's considered the conjunction of, 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 a, of a guru, which is a saint or, or a priest, along with the devil. So this is considered not a good, not a good conjunction, and it, it, it provides some challenges. But one of the things that we have to also consider in this conjunction is the fact that at the same time, Saturn will be in Aquarius. And um, Saturn is, has been blessed with uh, the aspect, three aspects. So Saturn aspects the um, zodiac sign, which is third from it, uh, seventh from it, and tenth from it. So when Saturn is in Aquarius, it's going to aspect Aries. And so when Jupiter moves into Aries in April, Saturn will be aspecting both the Guru Chandal Yoga, which is the conjunction of Jupiter with um, Rahu. Now, this is making this Guru Chandal Yoga a lot worse because Saturn's <laughs> aspect is not considered the best aspect anyway. It's a little challenging aspect. And here we have this challenging conjunction going on between Ju Jupiter and Rahu. And here we have Saturn aspecting it. So this is not a good conjunction or not a good planetary situation to be in where you have already a bad conjunction between between Jupiter and Rahu and Saturn aspecting it. One of the things that I would like to point out and I pointed out before uh, two years ago when Saturn made its move and, and Jupiter had also transited, that video is still out there, is that the cancer in our bodies, in the human body, is caused by the conjunction, malefic conjunction of Jupiter, Saturn and Rahu. 
So if people have those tendencies to have cancer in our bodies, it's caused because of the conjunction, the malefic conjunction of these three planets. So when this Guru Chandal Yoga is formed after April and Saturn uh, has a malefic aspect on it, the incidence of cancer for uh, people that are, have already have the, you know, uh, the tendency or the propensity in their charts to get it may get activated at certain times. So people that have had cancer that's in remission or they have uh, family histories, I think I'm going to give you the guidance to make sure you get tested for it because it uh, has activated that tendency again to get cancer. And you know, the first time when I put the video out two years ago when I had said that this guru, this uh, activation of these three planets was going on, we heard so many celebrity deaths from cancer. A lot of people we knew, we started hearing that they had cancer. And now again, this this conjunction or this transit is happening where all three planets are talking to each other in a malefic way. So I'm, my guidance to everybody is to please make sure that if if you have had cancer before, it's in remission, or you know somebody, or it's your family history, make sure you go get it checked out very quickly because it this will happen quickly. Now, I don't mean to put the scare in everybody at all. I'm not the astrologer that's you know, puts out things to scare people. In fact, I like to see the positive in everything. So I don't mean that everybody in the world should run out and get checked for cancer. Cancer has to exist it on your in your chart. It has to show that you will get it or you have the, the possibility of getting it. So if you have that possibility of getting it, that's what I'm saying. You should go get it checked out. Everybody doesn't, everybody's chart does not have the possibility of this disease. All charts have the possibility of different diseases or no diseases. So only if you have the possibility of this disease should you get checked out. Everybody in the world is definitely not going to get cancer. One last thing I'm going to mention before I go into my prediction panels is going to be the fact that anytime uh, Saturn transits into the next zodiac sign, it activates the Sade Sati for certain zodiac signs. So, and those are based on not the ascendant signs, but the moon signs. And also it activates the Dhaya, which is a two and a half year uh, challenging time for a couple of other signs. So three, definitely three zodiac signs are going to get impacted. And these are based on your moon signs. So I'm going to put out a video um, very shortly on Saturn's transit and I'll cover that, those aspects in on that video. Like I said, it's really not possible to cover everything in such a, in a small video. Um, you know, I'd like to do the predictions for the year for all the ascendants which is in going to be in this video and then shortly after I'm going to put another another video on Saturn's transit and then I'll cover the effects of the Sa um, Saturn Sade Sati which is the seven and a half year you know challenging phase on which zodiac signs that's going to be and then the other two and a half year phase for the two other zodiac signs that um, are going to get impacted. So the Sade Sati is going to be impacted by the transit of, your, uh, of Saturn it, based on if your moon is placed in Capricorn um, Aquarius and Pisces. So for Pisces, this is going to be new, but all the other two zodiacs is going to be in the next phase. Now the two and a half year challenge phases, which is called the Dhaya phase, is going to be for starting, starting for the zodiac signs that have the moon placement in Cancer and the moon placement in Scorpio. We'll talk about that in my next video. I'm going to move on to my predictions. Remember, my predictions are always based on your ascendant sign and based on Vedic astrology. Please stop asking me in my comments what they're placed on. I'm already telling you ascendant sign and Vedic astrology. So um, I move on to predictions, but if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe and please definitely share this video with friends and family. Aries for 2023. Aries goes into the new year with some mental confusion and worry about themselves, as well as the fact that their expenses have been very high. As soon as Saturn transits into their 11th house at the beginning of January, they're going to feel like they're getting rewards of their prior hard work. Overall, this is a very good year for Aries as far as their career is concerned and as far as gains from their career results of their hard work is concerned. They're going to get recognized. They're also going to get returns from all the hard work that they've been putting in in the prior years. 
The first house is majorly impacted because Rahu has been sitting there and then Jupiter moves there in April. The first house represents you and yourself and transformation. So there's going to be some transformation after April. The transformation could relate to your health. So you need to take very good care of your health. If you want to transform yourself in any positive way, this is the time to do it. You can either uh, work on yourself, on your body, you can work on your appearance, and you can also work on your attitude. This is the year where you need to take a very positive attitude. Understand that Saturn is going to give you that support because it's in your 11th house and it's the desire fulfillment house. All your desires can get fulfilled as long as you take the initiative and you work hard to doing whatever it is that you want or working towards it. The only challenging period is between April and uh, October, November, when the Guru Chandal Yoga gets activated in your first house. So you may feel that there's delays or obstacles in the area of love life, children, as well as marital uh, relationships. So nurture those relationships uh, during that time. Otherwise, before April and after October, November, it's an excellent year to manifest any desire you want as long as you work hard for it to see the rewards of your hard work for prior uh, years and also this is an excellent time for career if you want to change your career do it before april or after october november and you'll see great results for it overall this is a wonderful year for aries except for the short few months in the middle of the year the only other caution I have for Aries is it's going to be an expensive year. So avoid rash spending, impulsive spending. Both Rahu and Jupiter are going to be giving you that all year. So make sure you don't overspend and try to save your money because definitely Saturn is going to give you money, but Rahu Jupiter may try to make you spend it. Also, please take care of your health. Joining a gym or having a good physical exercise regimen or even doing just light yoga is the remedy for this year. Taurus for 2023. Taurus has been working so hard for the last few years. They may even have been traveling or going from here to there in their careers, wondering when they're going to see rewards and recognition in their career. When Saturn moves, to their 10th house of career at the beginning of the year in January, the rewards recognition is going to start in their career. This is a great transit for Taurus. Finally, their house of career gets activated by the Lord of the career, which is Saturn. So this is a year when name, fame, and recognition, improvement in status can be expected by the Taurus individuals. Since the 12th house is getting heavily impacted and 12th house uh, signifies foreigners and foreign travel, this would be especially beneficial in your career or if you own a business, if you can somehow get involved with um, something foreign, meaning if you want to relocate to a foreign country or if you want to relocate to somewhere far from where you live. Or for people that own businesses, if you want to get collaborations with foreign countries or somewhere foreign related, this would be an excellent year to do that. Rahu also is present in your uh, 12th house, which and Rahu does represent foreigners. So this is even a better yoga to either take your business overseas or start working with a foreign entity or a foreign company or a foreign collaboration. People that don't own businesses can actually start working for a, um, a multinational company and that would be considered foreign as well. Now, when I say the word foreign, it doesn't really have to be another country. Foreign also means uh, some, some place that's different from where you um, live or work. In order to succeed this year, you just have to remember one thing that since Saturn is in your 10th house, Saturn does represent discipline, honesty, and integrity. So work with all of those qualities and Saturn is sure to give you results. Don't try to defraud people or be dishonest or be indisciplined in your work. Saturn doesn't give results if you do those things. The chance of purchasing a home or relocating is very, very possible this year for Taurus individuals. Or you may purchase luxury items or spend on home related matters. So the luxury items could be buying a vehicle or renovating your home or buying expensive things from your, for your home. Period uh, in between April and um, October, November is when the Guru Chandal Yoga is activated. And for you, it's going to be in the 12th house. So be very careful about uh, uh, expenses, high expenses during that time or um, impulsive spending. So just take care of that. During that phase, it's possible that you have to spend a lot on either health matters uh, or you could be spending on um, legal issues 
or actually it's also possible that at that time you take on too much debt or too much loans. So be very careful about that. For individuals that are looking to start new business ventures or start new jobs, it's a better idea to do it between January and April or then wait until after October to do it. Only because you don't want to do something during the Guru Chandal Yoga phase because um, the effect of Rahu on the 12th house is it kind of distorts your way of thinking and your decision making abilities. So either you go to a good advisor and ask them for help if you want to make changes during that time or you wait for the before and after the Guru Chandal Yoga phase. Lastly, the fourth house does get activated. Um, so make sure you take very good care of your mother's health and also make sure you don't ruin your relationship with your mother because you're arguing too much or your thoughts don't uh, agree with each other. So make sure you take good care of the relationship with your mom also this year. Gemini 2023. Geminis have been so obsessively worried about their health and finances all this year. And that's the impact of Saturn being in their 8th house for the last couple of years. The great news is that finally in January, Saturn moves out of their 8th house and goes into the 9th house. The 9th house is our karma, our good luck. And so this promotes positive thinking for Geminis and it actually changes their mindset completely. One of the things that Gemini has to remember is that their ascendant lord Mercury is the fast moving planet and also goes retrograde several times a year. So Gemini is not able to control either their thought process or their communication at, at a consistent level. They go negative, positive, positive, negative throughout their life actually. And so the remedy for Geminis is to make, make sure they are consistent in staying positive in their mindset and also to keep their communication positive throughout their lifetime. And one of the other things for Geminis is that if they continue to learn, they can learn anything they want, but if they continue to learn, which brings the impact of Jupiter in their lives, their lives become very positive, but they also become very profitable and very happy in their lives. They, they start to grow in their lives. So as far as this year is concerned, um, their 11th house is getting activated, which is one of the best houses as far as desires, material desires and financial wealth is concerned. So finance, material desires, wishes start getting manifest at the beginning of the year. If you have been waiting for any settlements for a long time, yes, they could be realized now as well. After April, your health starts to improve drastically because the Guru Chandal Yoga in the 11th house is not really a bad place for it to happen. It may actually give you an obsessive mindset regarding materialistic desires, but it improves your health based on your own healing efforts. So make the effort to heal yourself and it actually will work wonderfully. Your social circle will grow this year. Your professional network of you know connections will grow this year as well. And any uh, social media presence uh, that you have will also have a chance of growing this year if you put the effort into it. This year is also looking very positive for travel. So long distance travel as well as short distance travel. So the long distance travel could also be work related, but it could also be related to some religious uh, travel or spiritual travel as well. Now, I have said that this year is going to be a great year for as far as um, returns on investments, material wealth and finance is concerned. It's a good year. There's a short phase when the Guru Chandal Yoga from April through October, November does get activated. So there's going to be some delays during that time in realization of, you know, material wealth, financial returns or whatever. So there's going to be some delays, maybe some obstructions during that few months, those short few months. So I don't want you to get obsessed about it and worry about it and say, well, I was supposed to have a wonderful financial year. Why is there some delays coming through now? It's a short phase. Just manage through it. Don't worry about it. And things do get better after October. In fact, they get really better after October. So it's a wonderful year, much improved year. Enjoy it and good luck. Cancer for 2023. Cancer's main worry has been changes in their domestic environment, upsets in their career, as well as juggling of the f relationships with money. And now here comes a Saturn transit into the 8th house. Saturn is the significator of career and the 8th house is transformation. As long as this transit of Saturn continues in the 8th house for the next two and a half years, 
cancers will either change their careers, change their jobs, or there will be some sort of transformation for the cancer individuals related to their career or profession. Depending upon when you're under the influence of Saturn via Adasha, Mahadasha, Antardasha, Pratyantardasha, this change or transformation can happen anytime during this two and a half year transit of Saturn in the eighth house. You will be working very hard in your career this year, but will need to have patience as far as rewards and recognition is concerned. This year, you're going to work very hard in your career and you're going to be very disciplined. But you may get worried or frustrated with the lack of response or the lack of rewards and recognition in your career. After April, the Guru Chandal Yoga will be formed in your 10th house of career and that may also cause some disturbance including sudden challenges at work or sudden changes at work. It's not a good idea to battle with seniors or take a combative approach with them. Things could change very drastically and they could be sudden because that's what Rahu does. It causes sudden events that come out of nowhere that you can't imagine. So my guidance to all cancer people is to keep your head down Wait until November, until the Guru Chandal Yoga has passed through their house of career. For people that are looking to change their jobs, it's a better idea to do it either before April or wait until after October, November, because Rahu in the 10th house gives very distorted ability or thinking ability to make judgment or make good judgment regarding your career. Rahu over here will also give you the impression that you're more important than everybody else at work. So you may take a combative approach or you may give yourself undue importance at work. This approach is going to work against you. So make sure you don't take that approach. This year is going to be a positive year for as far as finance is concerned. As long as you keep a head down and keep your job going, this is a positive year for finance and income and wealth. The challenge is going to come in how you manage your finance and income or money matters along with your relationships. So it's going to be a fine balance of managing the two where you could get a t into a tussle between how you spend or how you manage your finance as opposed to how you keep your relationships with your family members or marital relationships happy. There could be disagreement between you and your family on how the money needs to be managed or spent. And at the same time, I'm also cautioning you to that even though the money may be coming in, it may be getting spent in either paying off old loans or paying off old debts at this time. So even though the income is good, I don't think that it's going to go into savings. I think it probably either gets spent a lot or it gets used up in paying off old debts and loans. On a positive note, if there was any financial settlements that you have been waiting for, like insurance or inheritance uh, matters, then you can start seeing those settlements come in your favor after January. One other thing is that Saturn in the 8th house does have a tendency to bring on some health issues and they could be related to a prior ailment or health ailment that you've had in the past that could resurface now. Make sure you follow a very strict health regimen and one of the things you can do is have a very good physical exercise workout regimen, whatever works for you. And one of the other things you really need to do is make sure you're eating very, very healthy, eat foods that um, are healthy for you and then that agree with you. Otherwise, you could come up with or end up with severe digestive issues at this time as well. Leo, 2023. Leo, the year is going to start where Saturn transits from the 6th house into the 7th house, the beginning of the year. Saturn being in the 6th house is actually a good position for Saturn. But when it transits to the 7th house, this is actually not a very good position for it. This is going to create some sort of a disturbance with partnerships. And with partnerships, I mean your marriage partner as well as any business partnerships that you have. If your marriage is rock solid and there is no other issues with it. All it's going to do is create some bickering back and forth in the next two and a half years. If your marriage is already on shaky ground, the next two and a half years could uh, be quite challenging for you as far as sustaining the marriage is concerned. So you really need to nurture your marital relationship as well as your spouse. This is also not a good position for the health of the spouse. As far as your career is concerned, a sixth house Saturn transit to the seventh house also indicates that if you've been in a job for a very long time, now you want to start your own business. And if you do, it's not a bad position. It's not a bad time. So the next two and a half years, you could want to start your own business. And if you do, it's not a bad time to do that. 
for Leo, this is the year of learning in your job. So because it aspects the ninth house. So some Leos could actually travel um, long distance to learn new skills or to get more education related to their career. So my guidance to Leo is if you want to grow or progress in your careers this year, the best way to do it is if you can learn new skill sets, get trained, get additional training, take new courses to learn, you know, new, um, anything new related to your career or professional. This activates the house of luck, which is the ninth house. And this definitely helps you in your career this year. After April, Jupiter transits to your ninth house and then the Guru Chandal Yoga is for, formed in your ninth house. And so after that, from April to October, you may feel like every time you feel happy, you try to do a celebration of some sort, some obstacle comes up and then you're not able to do it. And I don't want you to worry about it because it, this is a very short time and it's really nothing serious. It's just the impact of Rahu being in the ninth house. And so after October, this in, in fact passes and what happens after October is going to be amazing because then Jupiter will be alone in the ninth house and that's when you start to see all the benefits of that where the benefits are going to be amazing well first of all your aura is going to be wonderful uh, you're going to feel happy you're going to feel blessed good things start coming into your life so happiness from children and for your children will also start at that time. If they're in the in the field of education or they're still young enough to get educated, they're going to do really well. If somebody's looking to start a family, that can happen at that time as well. Um, if you're looking for love, if you're looking for a love life, that's a perfect time. It starts after that. Good yoga for that after that. Um, also, your health improves drastically. If you were suffering in any way, complete recovery, feeling very rejuvenated and recovered after that. You know, overall, this is a good time for Leos, except for the short few months where you feel a little disturbed, um, you know, related to things not happening in your life fast enough. But once that yoga passes and Jupiter stays alone in the ninth house, Jupiter loves being in the ninth house. It gives the best results in the ninth house. Don't worry too much about the middle few months of the year. Otherwise, this is a very good year for Leos. Virgo, 2023. Virgo, the year starts with Saturn's transit from the 5th house to the 6th house. In the 5th house for the last two and a half years, Saturn had been stressing you out over children, your love life, and in your marriage, as well as very high expenses. Definitely, Saturn performs a lot better in the 6th house than it does in the 5th house. The sixth house is the house of career and your workplace. So when Saturn, the significator of career, moves to the sixth house, it can only give you a positive impact in your career. If you were looking for advancement, this is the time you may get it. Um, Saturn in the sixth house battles any enemies. It wins against any competition. And hence, advancement or if you were going to sit for any competitive e exams or tests, it helps you win against that. So while Saturn is giving you a very good chance of advancement in your career and good progress in your career, it is making you very, very disciplined and it gives you lots of uh, responsibilities and makes you work very hard. That's the alter effect of Saturn. So you're going to do really well, but the Saturn demands that you do it with discipline. You put in the hard work and you accept all the additional responsibilities willingly and with a positive attitude. Jupiter is going to stay in the seventh house until April and this makes your financial situation very strong and also keeps your marriage steady. Once Jupiter moves into the eighth house in April, things take a very different turn. And for Virgo, there's going to be a big difference before April and after April because Jupiter and Rahu are going to be in the eighth house and create a Guru Chandal Yoga in the eighth house starting in April. This Guru Chandal Yoga stays until October. So this is probably one of the most challenging positions for Guru Chandal Yoga to be present or for Jupiter to be present. The Guru Chandal Yoga is going to impact your health. A return of a previous ailment that you've had in the past may resurface. More than likely, the ailment may have to do with the reproductive organs or something to do with um, the body, which is below the waist level they could resurface. So make sure you get checked out. And this ailment could happen suddenly. 
Rahu is the significator of things that happen suddenly out of nowhere. So make sure you're very vigilant about your health. The other things that can happen is that the expenses could go up very significantly. So it's a high expense time from April to October. So stay control of your spending as well. The spending could be related to matters um, related to the home. Um, you could buy luxury items for the home. You could spend money on re uh, renovating your home, or you can actually also spend money on luxury items like cars or vehicles this year. Some Virgos may actually buy or sell real estate during this year as well. There's a very high possibility of that as well. Since the fourth house is also getting heavily activated this year, make sure you take good care of your mother's health. Stay very vigilant and stay very close to her and make sure you keep your relationship with her positive at all times. When the third and the eighth house get activated by Saturn at the same time, you have to make sure that if you do any contractual work, which is paperwork, you need to make sure everything is in order. You need to double check all the paperwork. Otherwise, there could be losses or there could be difficulty later with it. So make sure you triple check all the paperwork that you sign, any contracts that you sign. The time period between uh, April and October November also uh, has a possibility of disturbing the relationships with your in-laws. So make sure you're very vigilant about that. In order to overcome some of the challenging aspects of the Guru Chandal Yoga in the 8th house, the best remedy that you can do is to make sure you're doing breathing exercises regularly. Libra, 2023. Libra has had Saturn transiting in the 4th house for the last two and a half years. And that has caused them stress not only at home but also in the workplace. In the middle of January, Saturn will transit from the 4th house to the 5th house. It starts to give a very positive impact, not only in your career, but also from a financial standpoint. You will have good material gains this year, as long as you keep up the hard work and discipline. Remember, Saturn demands that you work hard and you work with discipline. During the phase of January through April, your spending is also going to be very high along with better income. But after April, expenses will come back under control. Just make sure that you don't take on additional loans or debts. After October, financial situation becomes extremely positive, especially for business owners. The whole year is going to be a very positive year as far as income and material gains and financial position is concerned. Your Guru Chandal Yoga is going to be formed after April until October, November in the seventh house. This is an extremely disturbing position for the Guru Chandal Yoga to form because this um, challenges partnerships of all kind. It definitely includes uh, the marital partnership as well as business partnerships if you own a business. If your marriage is already um, shaky, then this is going to be a very trying time for the marriage. If your marriage is uh, normally rock solid, then all you're going to encounter is some bickering back and forth and, you know, disagreement on things and arguments. But you need to nurture your marriage definitely between April and October. Although the very good news is that after October, when the Guru Chandal Yog no longer is in the seventh house or anywhere, then things could take a very, very positive turn because Jupiter will be alone in the seventh house and it will start to give its very benefic influence. And that benefic influence is going to be not only for yourself and you're going to feel very happy, but it's going to be extremely positive from a material gains perspective. It's also going to be very good for social networking. It's going to be great to expand your professional network of people. Reach out to people at that time if you want to expand your contacts, if you want to get um, favors or you need something from your professional circle. This would be a wonderful time to do it after October. And if you want to socialize with people or you want to expand your friendship circle, that would be a wonderful time to expand that and actually enjoy very good, happy times. Lots of Libra people will also get married this year. Love life seems very, very promising this year. So if you're looking for love, this might be the year you find it. If you're involved in education, you're getting educated or you are in the field of education, you're going to do exceptionally well. If your children are young enough and they're still getting educated, this is a wonderful year. Your children will do really well as well. 
After October, when Rahu has moved into the sixth house, it's a wonderful time to win competitions or win against other people if you're, you know, competing for the same thing. So if you're trying to advance in your career and there's several people trying to go for the same job or the same position, then there's a very good chance you're going to get it because Rahu in the sixth house never lets the competitor win. So if you're taking competitive tests, exams, you know, um, working against other people to win something, you're going to win it if it's after October. Overall, Libra, it's a really good financial year, but you just need to watch your uh, marital relationship in the middle of the year. Scorpio for 2023. Scorpio, the year starts off when Saturn transits from the third house to the fourth house. Saturn does not perform well in the fourth house. So this is going to be a testing time because of the challenging aspects of Saturn in the fourth house. Saturn gives you some obstacles in terms of career health and some mental worries along with lack of domestic bliss things may appear to slow down in the workplace and you sense a drop in your status and position don't make any hasty or risky decisions or any changes in the job or in your career at this time this saturn position is also not good for your mother's health so make sure you take good care of her and enjoy a good relationship with her as well from January through April, you're going to see a lot of happiness related to children. Your children will do well and your love life is going to be very good. The January through April phase is also very positive if you're looking for love in your life or if you're looking to start a family. If you are a student or you're in the field of education, this is also a very positive time. But after April, Jupiter will transit into the sixth house and form the Guru Chandal Yoga over there. So things change quite drastically as far as finance, career, and even health is concerned. Be very watchful regarding hidden, hidden enemies at work. You may remain very stressed and your expenses will go up during the phase of April through October. During this phase, you also need to take great care to not take on too much loan or too much debt because um, of the expenses being extremely high. The situation in the workplace may also become a little confusing for you because you're not going to really be sure what people are saying behind your back and you may get very paranoid. So you need to be very watchful what is happening at work. Keep your eyes and ears open. There may be hidden enemies. There may be people with hidden agendas that are planning things behind your back. Now, there may be some opportunities in your career that present themselves to you during this phase, but you really need to think very carefully through them before you accept any of them because your thinking is going to be compromised at this time due to Rahu being in the sixth house. It might be a better idea to get somebody else's advice before you actually act and you know make a change or do something different in your job or career. Get a good advisor and make sure that you run things by that person before you act on any opportunity. During the Guru Chandal uh, phase of uh, April through October, the other issue that may arise is uh, related to your health. You need to take very good care of your health because of Jupiter and Rahu being in the sixth house. Sudden uh, health issues may arise. And they could be related to um, digestive issues. And so you need to take very good care of your diet and the food you eat. One of the remedies that I can suggest is to make sure you have a good workout regimen and don't take chances with your diet. Things are not all that bad. After October, when the Guru Chandal Yoga is done and finished with, things take a better turn in the, your career. You may start to see your recognition, rewards, and also good income after that, better income, I should say, after that. You know, overall, this year can be managed pretty well as long as you maintain your um, communication and manage all your relationships at home as well as at work. Manage your attitude, manage your communication style, and it's not all that bad. Sagittarius for 2023. Sagittarius, the year begins when Saturn transits from the second to the third house. Saturn does not really perform well in the third house because the third house talks about your confidence, energy level, and the enthusiasm to do new things. Well, Saturn is going to reduce all of that. So your general feeling will be lack of energy and drive. As a result, there could be some frustration due to the lack of results that you see in your career. 
So your career may feel very status quo. You may feel like you're not getting enough results. So you may actually get the feeling that your career is not going anywhere and it's just staying status quo. But the real reason would be that you're not working hard enough or you're not putting enough enthusiasm or drive into your career. So the remedy is to work hard work with discipline and you may actually see very good results if you do that. Jupiter's uh, placement indicates that yes, you can get your desires fulfilled. You can see rewards, recognition, and good monetary benefits this year. The only catch is that you're going to have to work very, very hard for it. So as long as you work hard with discipline and um, with dedication, yes, you can see the rewards. If you don't put in the hard work, you're not going to be able to see it. So very clearly put, this is a year where you're going to have to work hard if you want to see results. From January through April, Jupiter is going to be in your fourth house and the fourth house is considered a house of exaltation for Jupiter, which is why at the beginning of the year, you're probably going to have a sense of happiness, domestic bliss, happiness from children. Your children will do very well, good relationship with your mother and family. But what happens in April is that Jupiter transits to the fifth house. Normally, the fifth house is one of the best houses for Jupiter's placement, but the presence of Rahu in the fifth house creates the Guru Chandal Yoga. And that's a completely different story. So for a period from April through October, this Guru Chandal Yoga is going to provide some challenging situations in relationship with your children. Um, if you're in the field of education or if you're a student, complete lack of focus. So you're going to have to work on that. And also, if you have a love life, there could be some challenging, disturbing situation there as well. Some people may also have some digestive issues during this time. So you need to watch what you eat um, carefully. Take good care of your health as far as digest digestion is concerned. And if you're trying to start a family, April through October might be a little challenging phase. Although um, after October, it's such an excellent time, perfect time to do that. Um, the good news is that um, after October, the Ch Guru Chandal Yoga no longer exists. And the fifth house, Jupiter, is going to start giving you benefic results again. The benefic results are how you feel. You feel a sense of happiness. Also, very good monetary uh, returns, good, um, good for finance. Um, also, there could be some long distance travel. And the main results are um, your children will do very well. If you're trying to start a family, it's a wonderful time to do that. If you're looking for love, wonderful time for that as well. Or if, you know, positive time for love life. It's also a very positive time for your father or for your relationship with your father. And best of all, if you were having any health issues previously, you feel very recovered, you complete healing. So it's very good for your health as well. Sagittarius, Jupiter is your ascendant lord and it's going to be in a very favorable position uh, for most part of the year, except for a few challenging months, um, April through October. But, you know, there are just a few months, but before and after, this is a really wonderful time for you. Capricorn for 2023. Capricorn, as soon as the year begins, Saturn, your ascendant lord, transits out of your own ascendant house to the second house. Saturn has been troubling Capricorn for so many years, at least the last two and a half years, in so many different ways, like finance, family responsibilities, and strict discipline. And now this transit comes such a welcome relief for Capricorn. Financially, this is a very positive transit. You will see good income and returns and rewards. Also, if you've been waiting for some any unearned income, like settlements from insurance, inheritance, or gifts, this transit is a very positive one for that. I do have one word of caution as far as finance is concerned. As your income goes up this year, your expenses also go up at the same time. This is an expensive year for Capricorn. This spending could be sudden unplanned expenses that come up. They could be related to some things that happen in the home. You could also be spending money um, for items that you need for the home, luxury items you need for the home. And some Capricorns could actually buy luxury items like a car or a vehicle. Also, some uh, money is being spent on foreign travel because I do see some Capricorns going on foreign travel. In April, Jupiter will transit from the third house into the fourth house and provide some challenges related to the fourth house. Normally, Jupiter performs well in the fourth house, but this case, due to the Guru Chandal Yoga, 
the April through October phase is going to provide some challenges. The challenges could be related to your mother's health. It could also be related to your mental peace as well as happiness at home. One of the challenges could be your own health. You need to take very good care of your own health, eat healthy, and make sure you have a good workout regimen whether it's yoga or, or having a physical exercise regimen is very important for you. And if you have any issues that crop up in your health, make sure you get checked out right away. There's a possibility that if you've had some kind of a health issue in the past, it may resurface now. One of the impacts of Rahu being in the fourth house and now Jupiter being either in the third or the fourth house during this year is the chances of relocation. So Rahu in the fourth house almost always causes a relocation. So Capricorn, if you haven't relocated already last year, then this year before October, there's a good chance of relocation as well. After October, Jupiter in the fourth house starts to give its most benefic results, which is a positive impact to your career and good financial rewards and recognition. There's a great chance that you may get promotion. You may also get some rewards or recognition in your field of work or in your career. This year is also a very positive time to increase your uh, social circle or your professional network. You can reach into your professional network if you need help or if you need favors of any kind, reach into your professional network and ask people for any help or assistance that you need and you'll get it this year. Overall, this is an okay year for Capricorn. Just take very good care of your health, don't spend too much and try to avoid mental stress or worries because that might actually ruin your sleep as well. Aquarius for 2023. Aquarius, Saturn is your ascendant lord and as soon as the year begins in the middle of January Saturn will transit from your 12th house into your ascendant house which is the first house. Aquarius is the Mool Trikon or the favored Rashi of Saturn and in the last two and a half years Saturn has been in your 12th house in the house of Capricorn and it has been a challenging time for Aquarius because it's been increasing expenses and also impacting the health of Aquarius in a negative way. Now Saturn in the ascendant house is slightly better but it has a little more challenging aspect to it than it being in the 12th house. It's going to make you work very hard and give you a lot more responsibility. And above all, it's going to make you be very disciplined in the next two and a half years. This year, you will realize that you will have to work very hard to achieve the results that you want in your career. The positive impact is that as long as you do hard work, accept your responsibilities and stay disciplined in your day to day work, the Saturn will give you very positive results. Just don't be impatient and expect the results to come very quickly. The results will come, but they will come with delay. Saturn also has a challenging impact on maintaining relationships within the marriage as well as relationship with siblings. And unfortunately, you are going to have to be the one that puts all the work in to make sure that these relationships are maintained and they stay positive. After April and until October, there is a Guru Chandal Yoga that gets formed in the third house. And this further disturbs the marriage as well as relationship with siblings. So you need to be extra cautious during this phase. You also need to uh, watch your relationship with your father at this time or the health of your father at this time may be impacted. The phase between April and October is also going to provide a little bit of a challenge in the career. And um, like I mentioned before, there could be some delays or obstacles in achieving what you want to achieve in your career. So just please be very patient during that time because what happens after October is that when the Guru Chandal Yoga is no longer effective, your career does improve significantly. Now I did say that the phase of April through October is going to be challenging in terms of career. But if your career involves either a traveling job or if you're based, uh, if you get paid based on commissions or if you're in any way associated with social media, then in that case, the phase of April through October could probably be very beneficial as opposed to challenging. After October, financial situation, financial rewards also look a lot more positive. The chances of gains, wish fulfillment, desire fulfillment, and definitely income uh, increasing after October is very, very high. Even though I did mention that the marriage partnership might have a challenge, those people looking to get married is an excellent year that you could get married this year because of the double aspect of Jupiter and Saturn 
on the seventh house so it, a lot of Aquarius uh, people might get married this year and this same uh, Jupiter Saturn uh, double impact on the seventh house means that a lot of uh, Aquarius might feel like starting a new business and if they do it's it's actually a very good time to do that just remember you need to be patient and put in the hard work Aquarius I really don't want you to be disappointed in this prediction because all I'm trying to say is just work hard fulfill all your obligations and responsibilities and success will come it just might be a little delayed but Saturn does give success it's it's a planet that's known to give the best success so as long as you meet the expectations of Saturn financial and professional success will come to you Pisces for 2023 Pisces the year begins with Saturn's transit from the 11th house to the 12th house. In the 11th house, Saturn will be giving uh, fairly good results. But in the 12th, it's going to start providing some challenges. The biggest challenge is going to be mental worries related to finance. Your expenses this year are going to be basically out of control. My guidance to you is that you start controlling your spending as much as possible so you don't get into a situation of too much loans or too many debts. There could also be a challenge within family relationships. Arguments over money or any small matters will get out of hand very quickly. This is the year where you will learn that your communication, your attitude towards people is so important. Otherwise, this family relationships have the chance of breaking beyond repair sometimes. Don't get into any legal hassles or fights with people because those might not end well for you. The Guru Chandal Yoga is going to be um, in your second house starting April and it continues until October. This is a time when your financial worries and relationship challenges are probably going to be tested just a little more. During this time, you also need to take very good care of your health. Make sure you're eating well because there's a chance of digestive issues coming up as well. And make sure you have a good physical exercise regimen if you don't have one already. Guru Chandal Yoga um, in the second house uh, sometimes leads to addictive uh, behaviors uh, relating to intoxications. So make sure that you don't start uh, any bad habits. And if you are already into some uh, stuff like that, then it's a probably good idea to stop it now because it could get worse. If you have young children at home that are Pisces ascendants, it might not be a bad idea to kind of keep an eye on them to make sure they're not getting into things that they shouldn't be getting into at this time as well regarding uh, intoxicating or addictive habits. After October, the situation does improve quite drastically because um, the Guru Chandal Yoga is no longer effective. So your career does start to do well after October. Also, income is going to be affected in a positive way after October. But the problem is still going to be that you're going to be spending a lot. So as long as you're able to control your expenses this year, from an income standpoint, this is a good year. But again, like I said, control your expenses. So career is going to do well after October. Income is good throughout the year, but control your spending and definitely uh, watch uh, your health and your communication. As long as you're able to manage your communication with all your relationships, there should be no problem. So I'm not predicting all bad things for you. I'm just giving you a guidance that you have to make sure you watch your communication with everybody so things don't get out of control. If you're doing that, things should stay very good because Jupiter does have some good positive aspects. All I'm doing is just cautioning you that the chances of things going bad are high. As long as you can manage your spending, manage your communication, manage your attitude, it should be a fairly good year for you. So what I'm basically saying is that this year it's going to be very dependent on you yourself and how you behave with this energy. The energy of having things go bad is, is there, but if you can manage through this, it could be a wonderful year for you. Glad you watched my videos. Thank you for supporting me. Goodbye for now.